Welcome everyone to the first episode of Silverton, a horror setting that I created a year ago for Halloween that we have now done three times in a row, but the first time we're going to be doing it on our Dungeons and Ale channel. And hello to all of our viewers here at YouTube and Twitch. I realize I'm giving myself a lot of pressure because I'm trying something a little bit new with this year's version of our session. And if it goes horribly, I have a lot of live viewers who are going to say that this did happen and I didn't wipe it from existence. Plus, I'm just going to point out all of the problems. <laughs> Until you cry. <laughs> Until you cry. I'm going to cry on the internet. Checks out. Yeah. Hey, it's 2021. That's accepted. I'm good. <laughs> that is true, actually. <laughs> and then somebody else will make a video crying, telling us to leave you alone. Yeah. No. Not, leave Patty alone. Anyway, guys, uh, Silverton is a uh, basically a setting that we created a long time ago. Andy and I have been flushing it out a little bit more. But about every Halloween, this is the second year in a row, we do a Silverton campaign or session. It started the, <laughs> every I'm, Halloween. Twice. <laughs> For the past two It's our years. second annual horror <laughs> setting set go. in the town. We did one in the middle. We'll probably do a lot more of them if you guys enjoy this setting on our Dungeons & Ale channel, but this will be your first experience to it. Today's players are going to be Free Guy. Just Guy, actually. Just Guy? Yes. Okay. Guy. I'm sorry. Guy is my name. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's all so my Guy name. and all what is your right. Jedi name? Houston. <laughs> because childhood dreams. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. And I was supposed to be the front man from Squid Games, which for those of you watching would make perfect sense. The costume didn't arrive, so I am a budget dark Jedi. My dark, the Sith. It's funny, my, my Sith name is actually Darth Kickass. I believe that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Darth Guy. Darth, Darth Guy. Darth Guy. <laughs> I like it. So alright. Let's kick off this good start. Yeah. <laughs> I know, isn't it? <laughs> You hear the door slam shut behind you, and in front of you is what appears to be a bellboy. Hello, Mr. McLaren and Mr. Reed. <laughs> it's terrible that this is how we meet, but the guests are all seated in the dining room, impatiently awaiting your questioning. What kind of bellboy is this? I immediately lean over to my partner. I'll tell you right now, he did it. <laughs> You're probably on he something. He is the murderer if... if <laughs> I bet my life on it. My pension. He is the murderer. Are you sure you want to bet your pension? My pension. All right. I'm never wrong. Well, there was that one time. <laughs> other than that, never. What about that other time? We don't talk about that. <laughs> Supposed to be horror guys. <laughs> we already established a you long time ago. For anybody who's expecting a real players. scary campaign, it ain't yeah. ever going to happen. I thought we were doing time. fine so far, but okay. <laughs> Way to call us out. I know. Uh, the guess. The words sound odd, knowing what brings you to the building. That word sounds kindly odd, knowing what brings us to the building. I feel like he doesn't want us to comment as he's going, but he also leaves space for us to comment. He does. As he's he going. stopped talking, so I figured <laughs> it was our yeah, turn yeah, to yeah, talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Odd choice of words. <laughs> You're from the neighboring town of Warwick, and this is the Gem Hotel, one of the finest hotels in the town known as Silverton. Overnight, there was a murder on the grounds. The EMTs have already arrived and have taken various tests, but they didn't want to move the body as this was as this was a rare opportunity. The killer must be in the building as the staff is reporting that no one has left the building since dinner last night and our victim, Benjamin, was shot at dinner. No, was alive at dinner. He's not even shot. And nobody noticed. <laughs> so I, if I had this to guess, be. the killer's name is Andy. <laughs> <laughs> that track um, was alive at dinner the local beat cops are surrounding the building preventing anyone from leaving so they called you the best two local detectives <laughs> he had to put local in there it's best to curb your <laughs> expectations <laughs> But you don't live in Silverton. It's insane to think that you would. People come from far and wide to visit and live in this town as it seemingly has healing properties. But you know the truth that that's all tourist shit. People go missing all the time in Silverton. So they called you in from Warwick to figure this out and bring the killer out with you. You are McLaren and Reed after all. And everyone thinks you can solve this mystery in about 12 hours. <laughs> it's weird that they gave us a time frame. We have a time frame. <laughs> As you enter the main building, in front of you is a uh, bellboy. I don't know why I put that there. There's a I, there's a desk in front of you with a man standing behind it. 
The room itself looks a little dated. Like they haven't updated this decor since the early aughts. I looked it up. That's the early 2000s. <laughs> Very good. We're getting too far along for me to say the 90s. Now it sounds... Oh, God, we're in the 90s. <laughs> The room, uh, there's a lone chair in the corner and various tourist guides to local mines, hot springs, lakes, and hiking trails. All you guys. Well, I mean, we're not really here to be tourists, so. <laughs> you want to hit up the hot springs? <laughs> kind of. <laughs> I'm just taking a couple of brochures. Hey, you never know what we're going to do after this. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to go to the front desk and get the copy of the guest registry. The guest registry, the man pulls it out. Nice little binder book. It's enormous. So much weight behind it. Like he pulls it out and goes, thump. And as he puts it there, dust pushes out from the count- from the countertop. <coughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> don't you have a clean here? Ah, we do. No, no, you but don't. But she hasn't been back in since yesterday. And I don't think she does a very good job. What's her name? Becky. Remember that. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely not going to forget. <laughs> you see uh, on there, you see the name Arthur Pentabold, Whitney Sotherby, are Dennis you, Hopperton. I don't have anything to take notes. April with. Bleem, Daniel Tressel, Trevor McHack. And Benjamin did not give him a last name. <laughs> Holden McGroin. <laughs> he's just Benjamin in all my notes. Well, it doesn't matter. He's dead anyway. We don't uh, really the body him. is currently sitting in the lounge. The man informs you. Okay. Like literally? We left it there. And he's still sitting up? Yes. It's going to be hell for the mortician. <laughs> Should we go check it out? <laughs> well, that is why they invited us. <laughs> <laughs> that is why they invited us. <laughs> what else would we be doing here? I thought we had to question the guests. Looking to your right, because you're at the counter right now, you see all the guests seated around a large, grand dining room table in the lounge. Uh, where is the body again? Uh, if you look to your right, you'll see all six of our guests seated around. Benjamin's sitting behind them. <laughs> Wait, there is. <laughs> Allow me to get this right, sir. <laughs> you left the body in the lounge. Yeah, EMTs wanted to inspect it over the there. And suspe- the suspects and current guests within the hotel are also seated in the lounge. Yeah, well, they said to gather them up for you. All right. Are, are there any plain clothes officers? Where? <laughs> Let's go back a second. Where was the body originally discovered? In the lounge. Okay. We were told to not move it. Right. But then they said to gather the guests and bring them over so you can question them. You so had I just... no other place but the lounge. I mean, we could have put them in the in the garden. We could have put them outside. We what could have had of, them in what here. What kind of chicken shit outfit works in this town? Good Lord. All right. Thank you, sir. And we walk into the lounge. And we're the ones who ruined the horror. I know. Uh, I'm going to get one of the other officers to please ask to escort the guests to the garden. <laughs> the, all the other officers are outside. I'm going to go the grab boxes. one. Yeah. I'm going to go grab one and have them escort them to the garden. <laughs> Move everyone to the garden. <laughs> well, just say you asked them to go instead of getting a pawn up for an no, officer. No, no. Well, yeah, no, that's fine. Okay. But mostly it's so they can't run. Right. Well, none of the guests are running. The building's surrounded. They can't go anywhere. Oh. They have to listen to everything you say. As you inform them that you want them to go to the garden, they begrudgingly get up. And one of them stands up and he's like, I swear, I do, I do, I do, I swear. I swear that you need to let me go right now. Foghorn Leghorn, I'm going to need you to calm down and please go to the garden. How much longer do you think that you are going to be? Looking at the registrar, you seem to you recognize this individual as being Trevor. Ah, yes. There was photos in there. Well, <laughs> well, sir, I'll tell you right now, they gave us a uh, 12-hour deadline, so we're going to have probably have this wrapped up in 11 and a half hours. <laughs> at yeah, least. I would say. 
Let, see, 8 p.m., you are going to let me go finally. If that is 11 and a half hours from now. I have some finger-licking good chicken to go <laughs> make. <laughs> All right, Colonel, we're going to need you to go ahead and wait in the, the, in the, uh, the garden, please. Okay. Also, uh, as we check this very messed around with crime scene at this point. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> let's get to it, I guess. As you inspect the room. With all of your guests out of there, all of them begrudgingly going, arguing. They're not very happy about it. I just like clap my hands. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> um, they. You look around the room. The table itself has six places made up, like serving locations and stuff like that. There's some eaten food kind of sitting on the middle of the table itself. Off to the right, you see a bunch of other tables, three separate ones meant for drinking and stuff like that. And along the wall, you see a couple of lounge chairs with like coffee tables in the middle. You see the, the suspect just sitting off to the side, just propped up in one of the seats. He looks as though he's just taking a nap. Except for the giant blood stain on his chest and the blood pulling on the chair and the blood trail leading from him over to the table. This is cherry syrup. <laughs> <laughs> they are never getting that out of the carpet. <laughs> I will investigate the body. As you examine the body, it, it, I've the, decided I'm British. Now. <laughs> <laughs> decided I'm British. Sorry, my accent's going to change multiple times. That's fine. Oh, so it's just me. <laughs> As you're inspecting the body, the cause of death is very obvious. Oh. There's a huge knife wound in the back of the body. Well, I, I figured out what happened to him. <laughs> Go on. I lean the body. He was stabbed. <laughs> that, that does seem to be what happened here. <laughs> and also, why is this like a trail of blood? They said this is where he died. So uh, did they so move the body? We've caught the clerk in his first lie. Write that down. <laughs> We are the town's greatest detectives. <laughs> I would like to investigate the entire room to look for anything out of order. Everything looks pretty set, uh, set up. Like all the silverware is in the proper placement. Uh, the trail of blood goes from the couch to the table. There doesn't appear to be any other trail going off of that. All of the chairs look a little pushed out like they were done in a hurry, but you then you remembered that you escorted everyone out of the room. <coughs> Um, but no, the room itself looks pretty much in order. You don't see anything that would be considered out of place for this. Well, apparently he died at the table, struggled to the chair where he then passed. Solved it in one. Let's get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go talk with the clerk real fast. Uh, hello there again. I couldn't help but notice the body's been moved. Oh, we did not move the body, sir. Then why is there a trail from the table to where the body is now resting? When was the body discovered? Oh, about two hours ago, 6 a.m. It's, it's a creepy very cat. lonely cat in this, in this hotel. <laughs> <laughs> Who discovered the body? Uh, the body was discovered by my bellboy up there in the front. You guys lean, look over and the bellboy from the beginning. Hi. Not of. Mentally challenged. Way too chipper to be somebody yes. who just found a dead body. You boy, come here. <laughs> what can I do for you? You discovered the body at 6 a.m., yes? I did when I was doing my rounds. Okay. When did your shift begin? 6 a.m. I mean, I walked in the Checked front out. door and it's right <laughs> to the right. <laughs> Let's check it out. Let's check it out. Do you have guests checking in around 6 a.m. often? No, but I have to do rounds, clean up the garden, clean up the lounge area, make sure the kitchen is taken care of. It sounds more like you're the housekeeper and not a bellboy. I do a lot of it's things. It's a motel. Here. It's not a hotel, it's a motel. <laughs> and we have a very short staff. Who was on shift before you? Oh, I believe no one. I did my shift until 9 p.m. and then I went off for the night. It's it's not tourist season, so we don't expect very many people right now. Except for the six <laughs> waiting for us, which makes seven guests. Seven total. And you'll notice there's only eight rooms in this motel. <laughs> it was ten in the original notes, but I ran out of room on the map. <laughs> All of these lies do not add up, my friend. Would you agree? You're not wrong. <laughs> 
him. We've already caught him in a lie. <laughs> the clerk's lying. <laughs> the bellboy's lying. They're in cahoots. <laughs> I look back to the clerk. What time is breakfast served? Oh, morning. that would be at 8 a.m. That's when we found him. So why? No. They no, said they found they him, found at, him 6 at 6 a.m. Aha. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Second lie. <laughs> Okay, about 6 a.m., 8 a.m. It's nothing to read into on that one. Just before you... <laughs> I'm, so, I'm telling you, they did it, right? It didn't make sense. I think we already solved this mystery. Don't worry Screw about all it. the guests. <laughs> you need to question Colonel over there. <laughs> what room was Benjamin, no last name, staying in? Uh, he would be in room seven. Okay. Here's all the keys. He kind of throws them at you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll take four. You take three. Okay. Oh, wait, no, there's eight rooms. I'll take four. You take four. <laughs> okay. Uh, should we question the guest first or no, no, investigate no. the room? Investigate. All right, we go. We'll make him wait longer. Exactly. <laughs> that one guy was a dick. <laughs> <laughs> we go investigate. <laughs> it's true. I <laughs> was a dick. <laughs> we go to room seven. <laughs> okay, <laughs> just random. Nope. Oh, no, That's that was his. Yeah, no. It was his room. <laughs> no, you Another not. lie. <laughs> That's three. We've gotten them it in is three. the clerk. <laughs> Got him in three lies already. Uh, the room, it looks pretty standard, actually, as if he's not even been in there. It's a pretty normal layout with a bed neatly tucked in, two end tables with cheap hotel lamps on them and a small desk that has a list of local eateries and such. There also appears to be a window overlooking the garden and lake that lie behind the hotel. You find it a bit weird that Benjamin would be staying here. I think it's a bit weird that Benjamin would be staying here. Well, he doesn't strike me as a high-class gentleman. No. He's just wearing an oversized hoodie and shorts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm projecting. <laughs> I check the window. Does it open? Uh, the window does open. That's strange. Most windows are stuck in hotels. <laughs> well, it's only a second story. It's not, yeah. it's now. <laughs> but you remember that this is by going in the room that you find it a bit odd that Benjamin was staying here. As he's actually one of the most famous local reporters for Silverton. So why would he be I staying honestly, in the for hotel? For a second, I thought he was going to say YouTube star. <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> I honestly thought that's what Ben was going to say. He's a YouTube star. He's a mildly famous internet personality. <laughs> Super mildly. <laughs> Super mildly. Uh, do we have any idea of what he may have reported on last? No. Off the top of your head. And right. Pull out my cell phone and check up last known... Uh, reports done by Benjamin. What's his He name? seems to do every kind of report from local puff pieces to reviews of movies and but nothing know, that local... screams murder. Maybe. No, nothing that screams okay. murder. But he does come across as pretty much an asshole. Everything he writes about everything, everything I know about this yeah. guy <laughs> looks like he deserved just it. Just a huge <laughs> <laughs> deserved it. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Everything about this guy, pretty much everything he writes, is negative, and he's against things, and he's always he's the, the kind of guy that always feels like maybe he should live in nostalgia, and everyone ruined the future for him. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Detective work gets my tummy around. <laughs> <laughs> she stopped for breakfast on her way here. We should have. Yeah. Um, just so you guys know, the stairs with the K over there, that is the stairway to the kitchen. Got it. Okay. Shall we check the kitchen? Well, we've got... I go back to the clerk. <laughs> Hello again! Was there a anyone working in the kitchen early this morning? This morning? Yeah. Well, the staff yeah. should have arrived at about 5 a.m. to just... prep for breakfast. Okay. Should have. Where Did is they the not? kitchen staff <laughs> now? Should be in the kitchen. <laughs> okay. Checks out. <laughs> <laughs> Possible lie. Write, write down a question. <laughs> we'll kitchen. see if they're in there. We go to the kitchen. <laughs> As you enter the kitchen, it looks like a standard hotel kitchen. You see a, a line a of dishwashers on one side. Okay. Uh, you see the big stuff for the pots, but you also see smaller things for silverware, cutlery, that when kind of thing. you say big stuff, what do you mean? Like big pots and things like that. Okay. Down the center is a series, uh, like a big washer for the big pots. Oh. Is that a thing? No. <laughs> <laughs> How would he know what's in a kitchen? He's a professional chef. I know. When was the last well, time he was in a professional kitchen? I was going to say, he's a trained chef. <laughs> Currently. He's Down the middle, chef. you see more of the cutting boards and all kinds of situations like that. And on the far left side of the room, you see the um, like all the stovetops, the ovens, stuff along those lines. Currently, you see three chefs down there. They all seem to be doing a whole bunch of eggs. One of them has disheveled hair, glasses, and he seems to be the guy making all the eggs. And he looks over and he just simply says, 
I do this for 10 hours a day, every day. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you right here, man. He's fine. He didn't do it. He didn't do it. He didn't you do don't it. think that could spark someone to a merger's rage? Not, not, not unless his boss was that guy. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's fair. I would like to question the kitchen staff. When did you first arrive this morning? I'm talking to all three of them. At the okay. Time. Well, the, the head chef steps forward. Uh, we arrived at 5 a.m. Where the hell are we? I mean, so many people have weird accents in this town. Where did my accent go? <laughs> That's, That's the better question. Uh, I was caught You alive. did it. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, I'm sorry. What time did you arrive? Uh, we arrived at 5 a.m. <laughs> the egg chef, Houston, uh, he found the body. I thought you said the boy Bellhop found the body. He arrived with his buddy Jake the Bellhop. <laughs> Another lie. <laughs> so I came in at six. We're going mean, to think it's so many people because of these lies. It's just the DM who's not 100% on his notes. <laughs> uh, this is not a great horror-based game. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. uh, mostly because of us. And a lot because of that. It's like 50-50. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> I've lost track of my questioning. You asked what time they got here. Yes. Apparently it was five. It was that's five. When we found the body, and you so. discovered the body at five. You said, "Well, see, I arrived at five, yes. and all the lights were out. It's very dark mm, at five a.m. Yeah. yeah." And then Jake and Houston arrived, sure. and they found the body at six a.m. Right. And then the bellboy called the police. The EMTs arrived. All the notes will check out if you look into what's going on with the hotel staff. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Oh, he's just telling us now. There are no lies from the hotel staff. I think he's trying to railroad us to the six guests upstairs. Not at all. Maybe we should go talk to the guests. I, you know what? Quickly, now that I think about it, all of their stories check be, out. Before though, were any knives missing from the kitchen this oh, morning? Oh, excellent question. Uh, no, actually, but we did clean up the knives from the tables and reset the placement. When I first arrived, it was very dark in the dining room. So I took all the cutlery from last night and I threw it into the dishwasher. In the dark? Lay it, huh? You didn't turn on any lights to do this. <laughs> well, I turned on the lights over the table, but not the other side of the room. The lounge is very large. There's many lights. <laughs> you know, if we hadn't gotten a, uh, an intuition that all of the kitchen staff's <laughs> <laughs> stories yeah. would actually check out, yeah. this would be very, very suspicious. You're not wrong. <laughs> Let's go talk to the guests. Yes. <laughs> Well, the murder weapon has been cleaned, so there's that. <laughs> no, the murder weapon's still in his back. No, no, he. Well, no, no, it was a knife wound. Was oh, a wound. I'm sorry. Yeah. I thought he was in his no. back. No. That's why I asked him for the knife. I got it. <laughs> Just saying, a lot of these kitchen staff are very. A lot of the staff, staff in general is very, is very suspicious. suspicious. <laughs> None of their stories are checking out. If you would like to look at the cutlery, it's all running through the wash right now. It should all be completed. Well, that won't help us at all. Thank well, you. Well, if you started at five, I better hope it's completed. <laughs> it was slowest washers. <laughs> Super slow. Just... All right, let's go talk to the guest. I feel like that's where we should be heading. Yes. Well, that was a waste of 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it in zero. All right, let's Yeah, go. but we've established that all of the staff is suspicious <laughs> as hell. <laughs> we have a list of suspects. <laughs> staff. All. Which one? All of them. <laughs> Also, I'm going to need to talk to Becky when she comes in. All right, I guess we go talk to the staff. Or the, the guests. <laughs> ah, hello again! <laughs> Listen, buddy, none of your stories are checking out. <laughs> going to need to take you down to the station for questioning. <laughs> I think we can establish right now we did it. <laughs> the whole staff. They were in on it. They were all in on it. He it's was giant. writing a bad review about the hotel. <laughs> That's tracks. Solved it. I take out my gun and I shoot the clerk. <laughs> Leave that Houston one alone. <laughs> He's fine. He's, He's fine. He's already in a, the world of despair. <laughs> All right, we go talk to the guests. As you as, as you walk back out into the garden itself. Has the body hear- moved? No, the body has not moved. Okay, just check. <laughs> <laughs> it got up his Hello, I'm Benjamin. <laughs> who killed you? <laughs> hey, who killed you, man? That guy. It was the staff. <laughs> <laughs> you guys solved it. Um, as you walk back into the garden, you get a, a waft of air hitting you, just like it's been outside, all these flowers, all these nice smells hitting you. But you hear a scuffle going on, like just your shoes, like just scuffling. <laughs> Does that sound like scuffling to you? A little bit. Yeah, odd. <laughs> and, you, and you hear what sounds like Foghorn Leghorn. <laughs> I swear, Arthur, I swear you did it, and you are going to come clean so that we can leave out of here right now. 
And you hear what is obviously Arthur stammering back. No, 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 look, I didn't do it, Trevor, okay? I didn't kill him. So can we just, can we just wait for the detectives to come and talk to us and they will sort this whole thing out? The other four guests appear to be kind of cheering it on like it's a, like a, you know, middle school. Yeah, <laughs> yeah basically. Yeah, you get him, Trevor. No, Arthur, don't do it. You making notes? Yep. <laughs> now you are? Instead of the invisible notepad you've been doing <laughs> them on? <laughs> How about like my character sheet? I do like the invisible. <laughs> uh, just let this play out for a second. <laughs> I want to see how this plays out. Thanks. As you guys watch, the argument seems to go back and forth between the two of them until finally Trevor winds up and sucker punches Arthur, knocking him to the ground. Foghorn punch <laughs> Arthur. He collapses to the ground completely unconscious. Well, that's one last person we got a question. Thank As God. <laughs> we step out into the garden. All right. All of the guests turn to you quickly. Except for Arthur. <laughs> Except for Arthur. That's a good point. <laughs> um, and they all walk forward and just look at you eyeballing. And Trevor and oh uh, yeah, Trevor. Yeah. No. Trevor looks at you. <laughs> well, are you gonna question us so that we can leave? I do swear that we need I'm gonna need you to sit over in the corner. You're last. <laughs> that is just rude, sir. You just punched a man out. You have no evidence of that. I saw the whole thing. <laughs> I mean, at the most, we could keep you for assault. <laughs> so he begrudgingly looks at you and is like, Well, fine. I have to go consider what I'm putting in my fried chicken later anyway. <laughs> go remember, not 10 of the 11 uh, herbs and spices. <laughs> All right, who do we want to talk to you first? Uh, who are the remaining guests not unconscious or Foghorn and Lighthorn? <laughs> you have uh, Whitney, Dennis, April, and Daniel left. Who looks the most scared? The most scared? Yes. Yeah, who seems nervous? They twitching. all just look annoyed at this point. They all did it. <laughs> they were all in on it. Mm -hmm. We have solved it. Like perturbed guests that are just tired of being here because they've been waiting around all night. All right. Miss Whitney, we're going to need to speak with you first. Uh, what can I do for you? <laughs> We are going to step outside. Well, not outside. We are outside. Inside. <laughs> that does make more sense. We will need to step further outside. I do see a path behind us <laughs> leading somewhere. Which room were you staying in? I was... I did not put those two notes together. I was staying... Aha, uh -huh, another lie. <laughs> I was staying in room number two. Okay. Shall we inspect your room? Uh, you are more than welcome to. Lead away. She brings you guys upstairs <laughs> into her room where she unlocks the room. And she, I do need to apologize ahead of time for the mess. As you enter the room, you see the standard hotel looking room. But you're hit by a wash of scents. She obviously bathes in perfumes. Oh, okay. Out, the out, room out, itself <laughs> is covered in outfits all over the floor, the bed, the walls, none of which are being well kept. And on the desk, you see a newspaper, the Silverton Times. And there's one glass on the end table, completely drained of its liquid with just, well, it wouldn't have the ice cube in it anymore. That would have definitely melted in the list. So then it does have liquid. Another lie. <laughs> <laughs> so it water. was the DM the whole time. <laughs> Uh, um, pick up what, the glass and sniff it. You get a hint of brandy. Ah, brandy. What is the article on the front page of the newspaper? It's a review of her latest play at the local Silverton Theater. Who wrote the review? Benjamin. Ah, ah I yes. skim the review. It's a scathing review, oh, telling about how God. her performance is terrible. Mm -hmm. She'll never work in this Motive town again. Ben hates her. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a little... Active. There you go. There you go. Active. There you go. Solid. She looks at you. Uh, I do believe having an article in my room is no proof. Oh, we didn't say we it was. We were not quite... I know what you're looking at, and I know who died. <laughs> uh, would you say you had a volatile relationship with... Uh... Volatile? He, would, he didn't know a nice word if it bit him in the ass. 
that. The man is a terrible reviewer and doesn't know what true artistic talent is. Mm. You're not wrong. <laughs> Would you... <laughs> I like it. We're projecting a lot. In this one. <laughs> uh, did you confront? Benjamin? I did yesterday mm. at about four p.m. And the clerk can tell you this. The clerk can confirm that you did confront. Yes, as Benjamin. you know, the hotel Where staff has their night? stories spot on. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. We did that notice that. True. That yes, is true. Yes. Yes. It's like they've rehearsed yes. at least, or, or just read their notes prior. Um, <laughs> Where, so you saw him at 4 p.m. Uh, what did you do after 4 p.m.? Well, of course, I went to dinner with the rest of the guests. This is apparently the only hotel that <laughs> serves a giant table of guests. <laughs> it's like a cruise. <laughs> oh, it's weird. So you all had dinner together last night. We month. all had dinner together at 6 p.m. How and long did this dinner last? Oh, I don't know. I left within 20 minutes. I could not stand being near that hateful man. So you didn't eat any dinner? Well, I, I kind of munched on a few croutons What was salad. for dinner? I don't know. I had the salad at first, and then I left. What kind of dressing? <laughs> Red wine vinaigrette. Check with the chi- kitchen we'll staff, see the if they actually staff, had that. Yes. <laughs> and after you left dinner, what did you do then? I went to my room where I had a glass of brandy that I took with me. Until? Well, they woke me up saying that Benjamin died. So you slept from 6 p.m., let's say, until 5 a.m.? Oh, until about like 8 p.m. until about 5 a.m. Interesting. Interesting. Can anyone confirm that you have not left your room? I'm sure the staff can confirm it. Apparently not. That kid leaves and then nobody works at this hotel <laughs> in between this time. It's the most odd hotel ever created. So you're saying you got a solid 11 hours of sleep last night. No, she said 8 p.m. Apologies. So you're saying you got a <laughs> solid nine hours of sleep last night. I need my beauty sleep. How the, otherwise, how will I be able to project my amazing acting ability? Okay. Where did you get this bottle of brandy or this glass of brandy? From the kitchen. Okay. Check to see if they have brandy. <laughs> <laughs> what? This is how you, this is how you investigate. <laughs> what? You're, you're spot on. Uh, is there anything else that we could possibly see within her room that would be out of place? No. If we investigate or anything? No, no, like, no role will get us anything. Okay. No. All right. Thank you for your time, Miss Whitney. Uh, you can roll, but no, there's nothing to do. Okay. Yeah, yeah no, that's what I'm it. saying. I don't want to waste time. Uh, okay. So we'll return and talk to Trevor's last. Trevor's Let's last. Who's the remaining not knocked out or fog or laying horde? Uh, Dennis, April, and Daniel. We'll see Daniel. I don't trust anyone named Daniel. <laughs> or Dan. Yeah. Or Danny. Uh, I'm just going to chime in just to let you guys know you have not asked anyone for an alibi. You I mean, walked her. They didn't like say, where were you at the time of... Well, we, we, we did. did ask her for ask an alibi. We asked her what she things. did, what time she went to bed, what time she woke up. She did not come out of the room. That would all technically be okay, an alibi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next time we will use the word specifically. Yes, we will specifically say alibi. Uh, So do you have an alibi for where you are? (laughs) Yes, I was asleep. (laughs) Okay. Thank you. For some reason, my brain didn't click the word. Literally all all of those questions. questions. (laughs) But we will use specifically the word alibi next time. Uh, We go get uh, Daniel Daniel, because we don't trust anyone named Daniel. (laughs) Of course. We're all shifty AF. Daniel is a terrible human being. That's in his notes. Mm. He looks at you guys up and down. I look at him up and down. I lost his How is he there dressed? Is. What does he look like? He Paint looks disheveled. Picture. Like his clothes have a bit of an odor to them. They have no, okay, mud that on everybody everything. I know named Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> um, he, look, he looks out of place. Like he's the only one who doesn't belong in Silverton, really. Right. And you're not quite sure why. Wa- shirt- and you aren't quite sure why. It's Something's off with his shirt. I think so. What can I do for you? What room were you staying in? I was staying in... Probably should have wrote those together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Room five. All right. We're going to go take Daniel to his room or have him lead us to his room. He leads you guys over to his room. And as you enter, it looks like a standard room. The only difference is a lone backpack sitting at the edge of the end of the bed. What brings you? I'm a traveler of sorts. I just travel along the East Coast. Right down that douchebag. <laughs> Douche. <laughs> 
I go where the wind takes me. <laughs> uh, where do you have money to stay at this place? I'm an internet mon- mongol mogul. <laughs> I sold a tech company back in the 90s. Have you heard of my farts? Anyway. I do have that app. <laughs> I know you do. I know, yeah. Well, I mean, it's a medical app. It, what it does is it analyzes your farts, and then you can tell if there's something wrong with you. Obviously. I mean, it's actually, it works pretty well. I'm not going to lie. That's how I got that. I, I caught the stomach bug thing, and then my doctor was able to fix it. <laughs> what? I know. I was there the whole time. <laughs> we have been partners for 16 years. <laughs> and do it all with One more you. day till retirement for both of us. <laughs> um... <laughs> I said, you remember, just one more day, Andy, and you'll retire. That's right. I'm too old for this shit. <laughs> and now I'm Riggs from... from, from uh, or no, I'm Murta. I'm sorry. Uh, where were you last night? I'm sorry. What is your alibi <laughs> for the time of the events? Thank you for using the proper word. You're welcome. I had a late night run to the kitchen. Arthur can vouch for me. I grabbed some bread rolls and some water, and I came back up here. And you say Arthur can vouch for you? Arthur can vouch for me. How can Arthur? Why would Arthur be able to vouch for you? Did he run with you to the kitchen? Arthur was writing in the lounge last night. Uh huh. <laughs> Did you have dinner with everybody else, apparently, in this very cruise-style <laughs> hotel? Yes, I did. But then you were also hungry late at night? Well, of course. What time were you hungry later night? Did you say? What time did you run to the kitchen? Oh, I don't know, like nine, ten o'clock. Nine, ten o'clock. Yes. Uh, okay. Not a specific time though. No, no. Okay. I wasn't exactly. I go where the wind takes me. My right, friend. of course. Yes. Whenever my stomach growls, where your I farts must go. partake yeah, of the latest food. <laughs> uh, what did you eat? Bread and water. <laughs> okay. What do you mean at dinner? <laughs> No, your late night meal. Yeah, I got some bread and water. <laughs> bread and water. Bread and water. Just a loaf of bread, bottle of water. I mean, it was sliced b- b- w- bread. So you made a bread sandwich <laughs> and a glass of water. I mean, if it, a, a disassembled bread sandwich. It was like three pieces. It was a, dis- a deconstructed bread sandwich. Right, right. I had yeah, some butter on that. <laughs> sure. Okay. Have you ever just had bread and butter? I mean, well, yes. And then you just wash it down with water. <laughs> it's a carb-heavy too- snack. I, I, too, have been to prison. Uh... <laughs> Um. It's just carbs, man. Get you back on the road Would quickly. Would you say you? But you did have dinner with the rest of the hotel. Yes. Guys. How long were you there for? Oh, about an hour and a half, two hours. Very inconsistent with his times. Uh, what brings you to Silverton? Other than the wind. The wind. <laughs> he t- I asked that. I was way. passing through, man. Okay. <laughs> He's I'm supposed a, to be on my way. He's becoming a hippie from the 60s yes. over time. I was just I just ready to pack up and leave. You can see from my bag. When was uh, the last time you saw Benjamin? Oh, last night at dinner. We are going to need to search your bag now. Go right ahead. I search his bag. As you jump out his bag, you find... A knife. <laughs> Did we get his alibi? I don't think so. Yeah, he was going down for dinner and Arthur came out with his neck. What time did you get up this morning? <laughs> 6, 6.30. They were calling everyone down. Everything's within the 30 minute time frame where this dude it is. They Except called you down at 6 30? 6 6 30? Somewhere around there. The sun had just risen. Of course it had. The bag. Check his bag. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> it's a water bottle, a clear, unmarked liquid. Uh, the hell? I open it. <laughs> uh, some snacks and some very smelly clothing. I open the bottle. The liquid has no odors to it. Uh, that's my steroids. I got this bum knee. <laughs> Just a, a bottle of liquid is a steroid. How do you? I pick? douse it, and that's how steroids work. There we go. Yeah, it should be good. Uh, I have there. to pick up some more needles from the pharmacy. I, uh, I would like to do an inside check to see if everything he tells us seems on the up and up. Mural. Nineteen. He feel you feel like he's being honest. He's not exactly explaining a lot of things, mm-hmm. but it all seems on the up and up. Okay. We head back. All right. Arthur. Arthur's knocked out. Damn it. Somebody wake up Arthur. <laughs> April. <laughs> Let's go. And we have her lead us to her room. Room. I'm getting room. to it. 
room. Hold on. Okay. Oh, Lord. She so, doesn't even know what room she stays in. April did it. I, I'm staying in room four. How old are you, Was April? She <laughs> She's about 65. She sounds a lot older. Write that down. 65 smokes about yeah, yeah, yeah. a day. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you just hit a bunch of numbers. <laughs> well, Oh, what can I do for you? She takes an excessive amount of time. The whole time she's walking over this, she's complaining about her bird watching and how you're interrupting. And today was the great red-crested Daniel Rumbles bird that was going to come flying in today. Have you heard of a Daniel Rumbles bird? Not once in my life. Check that. Make sure it's checked. <laughs> I checked for it a just, Daniel Rumbles bird. It's off. the rarest of the red-breasted birds ever. Its breast is so red. That people come from far and wide to see it, and it's only in Silverton. It's a lot of breasts. So it's, it's really just bird. about its breasts. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a lot of boobs. About. Yeah, and okay. Um, <laughs> so it brings. So you come to Silverton for bird watching. For bird watching, of How course. How long have you been here? Oh, about a month or so. Had you ever met uh, Benjamin the victim before? Benjamin, oh, that scant, scant, and scant, that scamp, scamp. Yes, I met him, and I thought he was a, an, a lightning and gentleman. I told him of my favorite spot to try and see the red-breasted Daniel Rumble's bird. And he blabbed about it on his newspaper. In a good way or a bad way? Oh, there's so many tourists there now. And that angered you. Oh, of course it did. A woman of my age, I may never see a red-breasted Daniel Rumble's bird again. She keeps saying it very specifically. Yes. Yeah, it's very strange. Uh, <laughs> do, you yes. have, do you have an alibi? <laughs> we have to say this specifically. We got in trouble, apparently, on a previous case. I took a walk out by the lake. There's an owl nest with some chicks. It started to rain, nice. so I went back inside. And what time was this? Oh, around 8 p.m. Did you see anybody else? Well, I saw Arthur typing away at his laptop in the lounge. Anybody besides Arthur? No. That's how you spell lounge. No, it is not. <laughs> <laughs> she was in the lounge. <laughs> did you have uh, dinner with everyone? Oh, but I did. The steak was amazing. I was able to eat one bite. I'm going to have to check That's with the staff about what the, what the menu was. How, how would you describe the atmosphere at dinner? Everyone was really angry at the Benjamin fellow. Including yourself? Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say there was any physical altercations? No, but at one point, Trevor and Benjamin had a massive argument. Trevor stood up and pointed a knife directly at him. Mm -hmm. I didn't quite make out what he said, but it seemed very angry. Close. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, is there anything interest in her room? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. As you enter her room, a gust of wind comes blowing in your face as the window is open and feathers just float up. An odor hits you again. A mix of bird poop and bird seeds. Are there birds in this room? No. <laughs> the window's open. <laughs> is she collected? What, what, like the desk is full of bird manuals and a map lays spread out on the bed. I look at the map. The map has multiple circles over and a big X over one locations that state, F you, Benjamin, I'm sorry for swearing map. <laughs> I believe that's exactly what it says. <laughs> <laughs> uh, inside check to see if we believe everything she's telling us. And she seems on the open. <laughs> she seems to really like her birds. <laughs> she seems brilliant. I mean, she's probably the most honest woman I've ever spoken to. Uh, I don't and I've think had I... three marriages. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Inside. You, you. Everything seems to be in the up and up. Are you right. Examining the map, though, you do find a giant plastic syringe full of bird seeds underneath it. Is she injecting the birds? What is this for, ma'am? It's how I feed my sweetie birds. Your sweetie birds. Yes, the owls in the nest. Where is this nest? In the, I said it's no, on no, the no, path. No, 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 I know, but oh. can you point us to it? <laughs> she points out the window, and you see a tree in the back area. Do we see a nest on it? Yes. Do we hear birds? Well, no. Towels. They're asleep. <laughs> I 
just try to catch him in a lie. <laughs> yeah, they're all chirping. <laughs> well, here's there's the problem. I will sleep in the day, at the day, during the day. I know this to be a fact. <laughs> Are you okay? What's happening? I don't know. I'm Something about this hotel. I'm overheating. <laughs> uh, just one last time. What kind of bird were you here looking for? The red-breasted Daniel Rumbles poppy-seeded yellow-tailed poppy butt bird. She, That's its full name. She added a few. Yeah, she's, she's she's lying. Write that down. Liar. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we head back. Who's the last person that's not unconscious or Foghorn Leghorn? Or Foghorn Leghorn. <laughs> uh, that was April Whitney. We did Whitney first. Did you do Whitney? Oh, Dennis. Yes. As you approach Dennis, you see him in a veteran's kind of coat. Like he's been in the army. He's that guy still wearing it from forever ago. Right. And he looks at you. What can I do for you? <laughs> the stolen valor if I've ever seen it. Uh, <laughs> uh, get your ass up and take us to your room. <laughs> All right. Okay. Only because I have no other option. <laughs> I mean, not really. You're, you're a suspect in a murder investigation. <laughs> <laughs> so as you guys walk through... He's walking, grumbling the whole time, very yeah. angrily there. Yeah. And as you enter his room, you see a newspaper on the desk, and at the bed, you see a hunting rifle. It's propped up against the bed as you find a rather large amount of hunting equipment, more than one person should ever have. Multiple well, knives, agree, okay. boxes of ammo counting over a thousand, things such as bear sense, deer sense, and a whole tent system, but you, like two or three of them. What room? Three. Were you meeting anyone, Mr. Dennis, sir? Oh, yeah. When I go out there hunting, I'm going to bring my buddies with me. Who are your buddies? Where are your buddies? Bill and Bob. <laughs> why are your buddies? <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> What's the newspaper have on it? The newspaper has an article of that Benjamin wrote basically just declaring that this man is a fake veteran walking around Silverton using stolen valor to ask people to buy him food, beer, and various supplies. That's why there's so much hunting gear. He's been getting people to buy it for him. <laughs> that was actually in the notes before you said it's stolen. <laughs> Spot stolen valor from a mile away. <laughs> uh, were you at dinner last night, sir? I was at dinner last night. All right, I'm going to need you to cool it with the attitude, first of all, getting very aggressive. He takes one of the knives off the bed, stabs it in the desk in the middle of the newspaper. See, that seems wildly unnecessary, and now they're going to have to pay... Benjamin's lying about me! Pull my records up! <laughs> Would you say you were very angry about this? I'm very angry all the time! Enough to kill Bob him? and Bill always say I need to cool it down with the popo. They would be right. <laughs> that, that, that would be where, an accurate statement, yes. Where are Bill and Bob right now? I don't know. I was supposed to meet them at 7 a.m., but they called us all down for this little murder. Benjamin couldn't even hold himself together. Couldn't defend himself from a knife-wielding maniac. What a loser. Sir, do you realize you currently are wielding a knife? And they're coming off <laughs> a little bit I don't bit like, quite know <laughs> what you're talking about. A little bit like a maniac. <laughs> Gonna have to go ahead and investigate all your gear here. <laughs> the gear all doesn't look used. It all's brand new, shiny what about blades. The knives? I checked the knife. <laughs> the knives are all shiny, unused, other than the one standing in the middle of the desk at the moment. Mm. <laughs> uh, what time did you come up for a bit? What's your alibi? Sorry, we have to use that. We got yelled at at a previous case. <laughs> um, Whitney and I took a walk around the garden together. I passed Arthur on the way back. Interesting. We didn't say that he walked she walked through the garden right? she did not mm, interesting they're all in on it <laughs> that is actually where i'm going with it, currently in my mind <laughs> uh what time what time yeah what time was the walk oh about 8 p.m mm, interesting well she was sleeping i got it yeah interesting uh and then you just went to bed at that moment you guys hear in the hotel like a like a triangle lunch is served I swear to God, if all those people go back in the blast, I'm going to punch somebody in the face. <laughs> what time would you say you went to bed? How long did this walk last, I should say? Oh, about 30 minutes. Okay, and did you come out of your room after that? No, actually, I went back to my room at that time oh. to organize my knives. Sure, as you do. Was Arthur still in the lounge? 
Arthur was still in the lounge typing away. And he can confirm that you walked up to your room around. Well, if you didn't let Trevor knock his ass out. I will wake him up. I got smelling salts in my (laughs) in my pouches. Uh, And what time did you wake up this morning? I I already said that. It was like six. Oh no, six o'clock to meet up to go meet up at seven. But they called me down for the murder at six thirty. All right. You're making me lose track of it. I got, I got it. <laughs> That's how investigations work. Uh, inside check to see if he's telling us the truth. Nat 20. It's 100% the truth. All right. <laughs> well, let's all go. All right. I'm Sir, you may uh, go wait in the garden once again. I'm damn well. Pull it well, do exactly. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's wildly aggressive. <laughs> but like, right. but like agreeably aggressive which is the weird part aggressively agreeable <laughs> whatever you tell me to do <laughs> officers <laughs> so we go back to the garden is uh, arthur awake yet arthur is not awake yet this I, time uh, trevor's like pacing back and forth angrily he's like taking weird like shots in the air like is that what this dude <laughs> i don't know he's fucking <laughs> wrote it out on pcp or some shit um can i i would like to try to wake up arthur i got smelling salts in my utility pouch <laughs> it doesn't seem to be waking up Arthur. Smelling salts don't wake him up. No. How hard did you hit this man? <laughs> Sorry, I hit him. You're the one to I tell you this. For blood. Around hey, Arthur? Arthur? In his stool. <laughs> you see blood slightly pulling around the back of his head. How did nobody notice this? How did we not notice this? <laughs> this is the first time you're inspecting Arthur. Uh, Trevor, we are going to need to speak with you right now. <laughs> what? What do you want from me? Well, you're being charged with murder. <laughs> Well, we don't know he's dead yet. I checked the body. Is he dead? I got I'm getting riled up. Okay, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Checking Arthur, his vital signs are very weak. This man is just now dead. <laughs> he is exactly What do you mean? What do you mean charged? I didn't do exactly it. You have no dead. proof that I did it. Hey guys. Who punched Arthur? All the guests point their fingers up at Trevor. Looks like proof to me. Oh, you're talking about him. I thought you meant that but the Benj no, I, I, yeah, okay. <laughs> Yeah, no, I killed this one. <laughs> right, I didn't kill the other one. <laughs> and I want that on the record. <laughs> I will not be going to jail for two murders. Just um, one. I head to the... I would like to provide first aid for I should get the for EMT Arthur. back. Okay. Check out Arthur. Yeah. Yeah. You, you've sufficiently got okay, it. Like, right. You've got him good enough that you're waiting for the EMTs to arrive. It's great. Now we don't have this guy to confirm everybody's story. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Hopefully he'll wake up before the 12 hours goes by. <laughs> Trevor, what room were you staying in? I believe it was six. You believe it was six? <laughs> yeah, it was six. <laughs> All right, we've already caught him in the same lock. We go to his room. There's nothing in it. It looks like a standard room. The bed's even untouched. Oh, that's strange. So you said you were staying here, though? I was. And... There's no luggage. There's no. It doesn't even look like you stayed in the bed. So where did you sleep last night, sir? I slept here. They, the, of course, the the maid came in and cleaned uh, the whole thing up. There's been no maid yet today, sir. That's true. The bellhop. What, what proof do you have that there's been no maid? The, as you'll see via our notes, <laughs> the bellhop apparently, who does everything in this hotel, came in at six a.m. and immediately found the body. So the question is, where were you staying last night, sir? I was here. Inside check. <laughs> I got really good insight. Fifteen. He was not here. <laughs> <laughs> were you Sir, at dinner last night? Was that? Were you at dinner last night? I was. So? <laughs> uh, would you say it is fair to us that you had an altercation with Benjamin? Well, yeah, of course. That I had an altercation. possibly pointed Benjamin, a knife at him. Yeah, well, I had to t- tell him what's what. He's trying to take my woman. And Who's who your is your woman? woman? April. Insert random name because not overly important. <laughs> oh, I thought it was Whitney. <laughs> no, no, no. That's uh, that's uh, Dennis's woman, apparently. Uh, but then it could have been. <laughs> a whole it's a whole love circle. Uh, I shouldn't give her a name. She's local waitress. <laughs> uh, local waitress number seven. To your local <laughs> waitress <laughs> number seven. There you go. I was finally gonna get real close and cuddly with Dizzy the waitress. <laughs> apparently, her name is Dizzy. Right there, no. Benjamin's over here showing off. He can write all these amazing articles and he's so rich. Just because I can't sell the property to save my life does not mean I could not give Dizzy a proper life. 
Okay, this sounds like a lot of personal drama we don't really care about. Uh, uh, however, sir, you still have not proven that you stayed in this room last night. There's no luggage. There's no sign that anyone has stayed in this room other than the fact that you have the key. Isn't that enough to prove I've been in this room? Well, no, that's not generally how it works. Can you account for your pay for the room? Can you account for your whereabouts after dinner last night? Uh, yeah, well, of course I can. Uh, Check your notes. Go ahead. I made myself Boy. a martini and went to the lounge. Arthur can vouch for me. Interesting. The he person that you, you knocked out, out and possibly well, killed. that's not my fault that I, I knocked mean, at out this Arthur. point, sir, you're going to jail for at a minimum assault. <laughs> so maybe you should just tell us the truth. Tell you the truth about what? I had a martini. I chatted with Arthur. Benjamin was nowhere How to be found. How many martinis did you have? About two. What time did you ca- uh, chat with Arthur till? Uh, I think it was like eight-ish. Eight-ish. Yeah, weird how everybody did stuff at around eight-ish. <laughs> and how not one person said they saw Every, Everybody, Amy. anyone else. <laughs> that is a good point, actually. Yes. <laughs> Sir, we have several witnesses that saw Arthur in the lounge last night and nobody mentioned. Because uh, they're all liars. Everybody's out to get you in this scenario. Everyone is out to get me. Well, Sir, you are in any form Disney. of antipsychotic medications. I am. What? What kind of a question is that? <laughs> it's a valid one. I think a pretty valid one. It's actually. a pretty. Valid I am on no medications ever. other than my blood pressure meds. Well, that seems. Or do you have them with you? I do. And he seems to get really <laughs> red in the face. Where are they? Because you have no luggage. <laughs> They're in my pocket. He starts going around. I, I must have dropped them when I had the scuffle with Arthur. What time did you wake up this morning, sir, if you stayed in this room last night? Like 4.30. You know, early enough to make my bed and everything. Right, yes. Even though you have no luggage. Even no. though you just said the maid made the bed. That is also true. Well, I forgot she wasn't here. And, sp- and you've also forgot you made the bed? Right, well, I had a lot of martinis last night. And you night. woke at 4.30 in the morning. Well, no. Two is a lot of martinis for you. Well, I maybe had more than two. At 4.30 in the morning after you awoke and uh, made your bed and then uh, presumably put on the same clothes you wore last night. Presumably. Uh, what ha- <laughs> when did you do then? Uh, I, well, I went downstairs and went for a stroll through the, the path out back. Interesting. So did you have to go through the lounge at the time to get yes. to the path yes, out back? Yes, I and did. And you didn't happen to see the body no, within I, the lounge? No, of course not. And can anyone confirm that you left the room at 4.30 in the morning after making your bed and putting on the same clothes you wore last night? (laughs) After having a night full of martinis. I don't know about you, but I've never been able to get out of bed that early with that many martinis. No. No one can confirm this. Well, who's awake at 4.30? Apparently you, after a night of drinking. Arthur can probably. He can at least vouch when I went to bed. Uh, No, because you knocked him out. Sir, when you went out to the back path, did you happen to see any local wildlife? No. Interesting. Okay. (laughs) All right, then. (laughs) Uh, If you'll please wait in the uh, garden, we will try to revive Arthur uh, to confirm any of your story, and then uh, probably you'll be going to jail just for the Uh, assault. Either way, you will be going to jail. Yeah, yeah, so I wouldn't be going anywhere far. I can't go anywhere. You've surrounded the building. It's it's true. Yes, that is true. We have actually done that. Uh, Okay. You know what? What time time did the the chef say he got here? Five. Five, okay. After you went for your morning walk, after making your bed and presumably putting on the same clothes from last night, what time did you return to the hotel? At this time, he takes a swing at you. Okay. Does a five. It does not. <laughs> so he goes to swing at you, stumbles forward. So I'm going to go ahead and move slightly, <laughs> yeah. take his arm and keep pulling it, and then kick him in the knee so he falls down on the ground. <laughs> he hits the ground. What the hell, man? And I'm going to twist his arm behind his back, <laughs> grab the other one. <laughs> and quickly handcuff And quickly him. handcuff him. And then, just for S's and G's, shove him to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? I was falling forward. <laughs> With a fist. Can man. anyone confirm that you were falling forward? I'm sure your partner can. Did you see I him falling or punching? Oh, interesting, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Looks yeah. like a punch to me. Yeah, okay. So, is there a reason you tried to take a seat? Well, now you're going to be going to prison for uh, assault. Yes, and, and assaulting an officer. And trying to assault an officer. You hear a assault. scream outside as not Whitney dead. yells, Arthur's dead! <laughs> Well, that's not good. <laughs> well, you are now being charged with murder as well. Uh, you are looking at a very long time in prison, so 
Anything you want to get off your chest, well, you're at it. <laughs> All right, fine, I did it. If I got rid of Benjamin, it would have been fine. I stabbed him with the knife and I put it in the dishwasher. You put it in the dishwasher. Wow, he, he flat out <laughs> <laughs> gave up a lot more than I anticipated. I thought I was going to have to make a roll, but apparently not. Nailed it I'm, like, I'm on his back just like... This was a lot easier than what? I anticipated. Oh. We probably should have started with him. <laughs> yeah, but he would have been as riled up. That is true. And we did get a lot of information we from did. the other guy. Yeah, yeah, okay. I At that moment, up. as you pick him up, yeah. the building itself begins to shake violently. The windows begin to blow out towards you. I knew we should have come to Silverton. <laughs> <laughs> I told you the stories were you bullshit. You each take five damage on the glass blowing towards you. This is bullshit. Unless you can give me a deck saving health. throw. Oh. oh, I could try. Yeah. I'm good at Well, it. I know you did Dex, so. So did I. Yeah, 24. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. the glass gives you half damage, three. Uh, it would actually be two, because it goes to the lower. You hear an otherworldly distorted voice. You also take half damage. An otherworldly distorted voice saying something. Just, <laughs> and the walls begin to crack and bleed as you begin to panic that nothing seems popular. Nothing seems popular here. <laughs> That'd be proper. <laughs> Not really sure what it has to do with anything. <laughs> Me either, but Trevor if I had begins to, guess... to panic. He's just screaming, What is going on? You murdered a man. <laughs> this is your punishment. <laughs> Let me Turns rephrase. out we're demons. <laughs> you murdered two men now. <laughs> this is punishment. <laughs> I get him. Pull my gun. Okay. <laughs> just, I mean, it just well, seems obviously. prudent. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to shoot anybody right this moment, but it <laughs> seems prudent. <laughs> this detective story is taking a turn. Is that it? For That's now? what's happening right now. The building is still shaking, though. All right, I glance out the window. What do I see? Outside of the window, you see nothing but fog and mist rolling through, and you see darkness outside. We're in silent hill. Darkness! No parents! <laughs> and apparently we have no parents. <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> We've right. been working together for 18 that's years. That's right. I pushed 16 years. I know. Okay. I changed it on purpose. So that's a lie. <laughs> ah! I push him out into the hallway. Still, you know, with my hand on his back. Shoving Trevor? Yeah, yeah. Gun lowered, but okay. you know, ready to shoot him. Should he try anything? <laughs> Obviously. Is anything going out in the hallway? The halls are all bleeding, cracked. Everything's still happening. The building is still shaking. You don't hear any other noises coming from downstairs as if all of the guests have left. I push him downstairs. As you make it downstairs, you see that the clerk and the bellboy are both gone. The front door is standing right there with no one in front of it. Go out the front door. As you sprint to the front door and swing it open, in front of you is a towering man. He's at least seven feet tall. He has barbed wire across his chest, crisscross, pressing tightly, so tightly that it is drawing blood. And on his head, you see a bloodied bear's skin, which obscures his eyes and his face. And then you see the giant butcher's knife behind him, just in time to see it come swinging down on your head. I'm dead. Yeah, well, what are you going to do? <laughs> then the both of you hear the door slam shut behind you, and in front of you is what appears to be a bellboy. Hello, Mr. McLaren and Mr. Reed. It's terrible that this is how we meet. The guests are all seated in the dining room, impatiently awaiting your questioning. <laughs> what year is it? <laughs> 2021? What day of the week? Friday? What day did we get here? <laughs> I, I don't say, know. No one <laughs> asked that at the beginning. <laughs> that tracks. It was Friday when we got here. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Trevor did it. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Trevor? I look at the guest registry. All of the previous guests are on the registry except Trevor. Uh oh. <laughs> We're going to have to question everybody again. How? Why are we here? To solve the murder of Benjamin. The body is in the hallway. Glancing forward at the area where the stairs are, you see his body just laid out right there this time. I investigate the body. It looks like there's no markings on it, but it looks like it just stumbled down the stairs. Should not have come to Silverton. <laughs> 
if we've got to do this four more times, <laughs> I'm quitting now. <laughs> so we're clear on that. I'm sorry. I should be telling him. If we've got to do this four more times. I was wondering. If I... I'm quitting now. Uh, okay. Uh, everybody's in the lounge. Everyone's in the lounge. That's As you glance over, all five of them, other than Trevor, are in the lounge. Trevor's the one with the big knife. That seems that we should have known right away <laughs> that, that he was, in fact, Trevor murdered. is also a woman. <laughs> oh, is he? Hey, well, I'm not here to, you know. No, no, it's maybe. There's a, a chance. Vampire. It's a vampire. Okay, I go sit in the lounge. <sighs> you just have a seat? Yep, just, yep, just have a seat. I am going to need something strong. <laughs> go get us some whiskeys. Uh, who pushed Mr. Benjamin down the stairs? Let's just get it out of the way now. Who did it? <laughs> All of the guests turn back to... And Whitney speaks up. And who are you? Uh, we are the detectives who have been assigned to solve this... I pause for dramatic effect. Murder. As you say the word murder, the building rumbles. Apparently, the trigger word is murder. <laughs> murder. Okay, enough, enough, enough. Murder? <laughs> Give me a reception roll. Murder. <laughs> 22. You hear a scraping noise outside of the windows. Check the windows. I check the windows. You glance outside, and what you see is the man from before circling the building in the fog. That's not good. <laughs> I'm trying to remember how we started this last time. I go out to, back to the front. Uh, Claire could ask him what time the body was found. Uh, the body was found at 6 a.m. this morning. Okay, so the time Who found it? It's time stamped. Right? The bellboy when he arrived. Okay, so that okay. tracks. We at least got that. I go back into the lounge. Uh, this is going to be awful. Uh, okay, <laughs> I would like to speak to Arthur first. Uh, what can I do for you? That's true. We didn't talk to him last night. Not even a little bit. Not even a little bit. Where were you last night, sir? I was typing away at my laptop over here. Uh, at what time? Uh, the entire evening. What time did you go to bed? Uh, I went to bed. At, well, no, I did go to bed. I was up until at least 3 a.m., got a quick nap over here in the lounge, and I stayed over here typing away. Mm -hmm. My newest novel is on its way out. What's it called? I haven't named it yet. It's a murder mystery. Ah. <laughs> I'm gaining a lot of inspiration. Yeah. Would you say that you tried to make your own inspiration? The building rumbles. <laughs> ah, nailed it. <laughs> uh, okay. Can anyone confirm that you were down here the entire night, sir? I believe I've seen everyone at some point in the evening. I looked to everybody else. <laughs> and Can help. anyone confirm that he was down here the whole night? <laughs> all of them chime in and basically say, yes, they were all down here in the evening. At some point? At some point, yes. Mm. Um, but then Arthur chimes in. I don't believe I saw Whitney. It's funny to have them do this at the table with each other. <laughs> I looked to Whitney. Whitney. Oh, no, no, of course I was out there. I was practicing my lines in the garden. Arthur, how could you not have seen me go out there? I looked to Arthur. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I swear I saw everyone else. I mean, I had a drink. I was having a great time with names. <laughs> sure, yes. With Dennis and talking with April and Daniel. Right. I never really saw you. Whitney, can anyone else confirm where you were last night? Well, I, I was talking to Benjamin. Oh, mm. <laughs> the one who's dead so the dead the person lines. can confirm where you Who were. Who are you talking night. about? We, we were just talking, having a lovely discussion about him coming back to my play to give it a brand new review. Mm. Where were you talking to him? Uh, we were talking in the garden, and then I brought him up to my room and I coerced him a little. Physically? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With murder? <laughs> okay, just checking. <laughs> the scraping noise gets louder on the outside of the building. I bet it was her. It was a good chance. Yeah. <laughs> it was a great Can chance. Can anyone else confirm? I look around the rest of the table. Can anyone else confirm uh, Whitney's lo uh, location last night? No one else can confirm. Nor did not. <laughs> what fair. time did Benjamin leave your room? Oh, I believe he left about 1 a.m. Arthur, did you see Benjamin leave the room? I did not. 
But if he fell down the stairs, I was a bit way a ways away from him. That's true. And nobody can see past 10 feet in this. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah. It was, and also the lights, also the lights only go in a bubble for yeah. some reason. Yeah. Yeah. The lights were off. <laughs> he was typing it was just the glow of his laptop. Yeah, that tracks. Um... I look to the rest of the room. Dennis, where were you last night? Dennis was... I took a walk in the garden alone. I passed Arthur on my way back. Arthur chimes in, he did. <laughs> what time did was you this? hear Whitney practicing lines in the garden? No, I don't believe I did. Whitney chimes in, Dennis, you... Oh, I can't think of a fun word to yell. <laughs> what an odd thing for her to say. Yes. Oh, quick question. Uh, Whitney, did you hear any wildlife in the gardens last night? No. Why would I have heard wildlife in the gardens? Dennis, did you hear of any wildlife? Oh, yes. There's the owls. They're out back. Interesting. So, Whitney, no one can confirm where you were, and you were the last to see the victim alive, supposedly. What are you insinuating, sir? That you murdered him. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry. Was that not obvious? No, it was was very obvious. It was very obvious, yes? Okay. You have no evidence. Uh, we have circumstantial evidence, which at this time is good enough to arrest you. <laughs> and then we can mount a more formal investigation. Yes. 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 Okay. We uh, cuff her. We cuff her. <laughs> As you cuff her. Man, we're getting good at this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing we actually did question all these uh-huh. people. We learned enough information. I was kind of thinking that when you were like, I don't want to do the loop again. And I'm yeah. like, you got all the core yeah, information. Yeah, yeah, we're good. There are going to be some slight changes, but... Uh, the building begins to shake shake violently and everyone around you begins to vanish like slowly shimmer away the walls crack and bleed and Whitney begins to scream "Ah! Ah!" she pulls away from you give me your strength roll Mm. 12 you make it wow she's weak (laughs) she tries to pull away Nothing happens. I that's slam her on the table. That's when you hear the front door slam open. <laughs> Too much. Too much. No? Again, the voice. door slams open, and walking fr- through the front door is our seven-foot-tall man as he comes to the doorway of the lounge and just stares you guys down. Offer it, Whitney. <laughs> I don't think we're supposed to offer our suspects up. Oh, my bad. <laughs> I just remember this already okay. once. Wait, do I remember this happening? You remembered everything from the first loop. Yeah, trust me. <laughs> Ben's also been playing Deathloop. <laughs> <laughs> when he was making this game. He was watching a lot of Knives Out and Deathloop at the same time. I aim my pistol at him. He doesn't budge. I fire. Twice. Roll her AC. Pew, pew. <laughs> that, is what, that is what guns sound like. I'm going to keep that one this time. Uh, let's see. So that's a 21 and a 24. Uh, the 24 hits. Yeah, I'll take it. You're going to shoot him too? Well, yeah. I'm going to shoot and I'm going to shoot. Uh, eight damage. Yui? Uh, one of them is definitely going to miss. And 27. 27 yes. hits. Ten damage. Ten. Nice. He doesn't even appear phased. <laughs> I pick up Whitney and start backing out of the room towards the gardens. We gotta get the hell out of here, man. <sighs> we run. Oh, I was you like, run out the back. Is? You hear him slowly dragging the knife behind him as he's just slowly walking towards you. But he's definitely not moving at a quick pace. As you burst out into the gardens and look through the path leading out into the trail leading to the lake, you see the darkness and the swirling fog darkness. around the building. I don't think we're getting out of here. I'm going to test something. Okay. I push her out. (laughs) As you push her out, you hear the door slam behind you, and in front of you is what appears to be the bellboy. Hello, Mr. McLaren and Mr. Reed. It's terrible that this is how we met, but the guests are all seated in the dining room and patiently awaiting your questioning. It's kind of what I thought was going to (laughs) happen. And how many guests would that be? Well, four. Man, we yeah. have to do this every fucking time. Which one's Whitney? Uh, woman with the knives. Okay. We should just... All right, does any more of them have knives? <laughs> Let's just assume. Uh, April's got a knife, it seems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's I just walk in with my gun out. April did it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just 
As you guys watched the thing, the ledger once again states four uh, over in the dining room area. You see Where's the body. <laughs> the body is in the entryway, literally right where you stand, where you're standing. It's right there, man. <laughs> Look at that. How did you not notice that? You stepped over it twice. <laughs> I have no idea what kind of hell we are in right now. <laughs> As you guys enter into the lounge, everyone seems the way they did the last two times you came in here. All except Arthur. He's typing away at the laptop. He seems feverishly. Like his hair is a little disheveled. Oh, Arthur, who did you see this time? What? What? Who? What are you doing there, what buddy? What are you doing? I'm writing my story. My novel is finally coming together. There just seems to be something happening that is just messing with it. I, I just need to figure it out. Hmm. How long have you just say you've been down here writing? I've been writing here until about 5 a.m. I, sn- I fell asleep in the lounger, so then I got up when they told me that Benjamin died. Did you uh, see anybody else throughout the night? I've seen everyone for the most part throughout the night. For the most part, what does that mean? Yes. So who didn't you see? I'm looking. <laughs> okay. Take your time. He's remembering, but he's still typing. Um, I don't believe I saw Dennis the Traveler down here. Mm, interesting. Dennis. Where were you last night? <laughs> Dennis just looks at you guys and he goes, I was out in the garden. <laughs> Did anybody see Dennis in the garden? <laughs> Just, I think we're not horrified. We're just like, oh, God damn it. It's just like Groundhog Day. We guys are like, okay, I'm going to jump to the conclusions here. Pretty much. <laughs> uh, none of them can confirm that Dennis was in, in the garden right there. And that's when Whitney's missing. So. <laughs> oh my God, the voice of Whitney is telling us things. Uh, and that is when. What? Why did I not put the names next to the. Because that'd be smart. Yeah, you're not good with oh, I'm sorry, Daniel. Daniel's the traveler. Dennis grabs his backpack. Look what I found in his backpack, and he dumps it on the table. Dennis, uh, Daniel begins to freak out, trying to get, go like jump on top of the, the pile of stuff. Mm-hmm. But what you see is a water bottle, a pistol, a bottle of unmarked clear liquid, multiple syringes, snacks, dirty clothing, and photos of multiple people in the bag, including one of Benjamin with his eyes crossed out. All right. I'm going to go ahead and cuff him right <laughs> off the bat. <laughs> Come with me, sir. You are under arrest for the murder of Benjamin. <laughs> and then I immediately pull my gun and turn towards the front. <laughs> I am ready. The building shakes. The walls begin to bleed. And stepping through the front door is, of course, our bear man, bloody mess guy. I shoot him again. <laughs> oh, I'm just going to push Dennis right out the window. Oh, okay. All right. That works. <laughs> into the blackness. Before you push him out into the blackness, you do notice Arthur's the only other one that has not vanished at this point. Oh, but as you push Dennis out, of course, you hear the door slam behind Damn you. Damn man. <laughs> I got antsy. <laughs> you hear the door slam behind you, and in front of you is what appears to be the bellboy. Hello, Mr. McLaren and Mr. Reed. Ah, ah. Three guests. <laughs> Where's the body? I turn around and I open up the door. If you look outside, you see nothing but the swirling mist. And through the mist, you see the lobby on the other side. The bellboy is on that side of there. Oh, hello, Mr. McLaren and Mr. (laughs) All right, we ain't going that way. (laughs) I told you we shouldn't have taken this job. I told you. And you're like, it's going to be fine. All that stuff is bullshit. The bellboy tells you that the victim has been shot in the lounge. All right. I got an idea. Okay, go ahead. What's Arthur doing? <laughs> As you enter the room, Arthur is just going to town, sweat beating down. He's got a little bit of a stubble groan as if he hasn't shaved in a few days now. Arthur, you are under arrest for the murder of... <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> four people right now, including my sanity. I take his laptop from him. He freaks out and lunges for it. I back him. him. <laughs> Give me an AC roll. Uh, uh, attack roll. Uh, da- attack roll. That is 12. 12 does not hit Arthur. He manages to grab the laptop. No! The story cannot be interrupted! I uh, shoot the laptop. Can... We need to read the laptop. Oh, I don't shoot the laptop. <laughs> he shot if, the laptop. If anything, shoot Arthur! <laughs> I shoot Arthur in the leg. Give me an attack roll. I like how he just jumps the gun. <laughs> no, I'm trying to get it for a reason, man. 14? 14 shoots Arthur in the leg and he drops. I was a little overzealous, but okay. <laughs> I put the laptop on the table. 
I assume everyone's freaking out at this point. Oh yeah, no. I tell them all. Well, you've only up. got Dennis and April left, so they're oh, they're scary. just kind of you freaking out. I pull out my gun. Dennis pulls out a pistol and he's just like, "Get away! Get away from me, man!" I don't have time for this. <laughs> I read the laptop. What has the Arthur opening been lines left? state? You hear the door slam shut behind you, and in front of you is what appears to be a bellboy. Hello, Mr. McLaren and Mr. Reed. Ben, it's t- Ben's also been playing Alan Wake. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Yeah. In my defense, I hadn't played it when I wrote this. <laughs> sure you had it. <laughs> he's, been, he, he's been watching Knives Out, playing Dead Loop, point, and Alan Wake. At this point, my tie is undone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, I figured the out our issue. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> We're stuck in a story, apparently. <laughs> Are we real? The story continues to go on, explaining, and you can see where edits have been made, Mm -hmm. that the detectives have figured out the murders the first time, and then you can see where Arthur was making tweaks to it because the detectives had figured it out too quickly. Mm -hmm. I see. I push Arthur against the chair, my pistol at his face, and I say, how does the story end, Arthur? (laughs) (laughs) How does the story end? The story doesn't end because you keep messing with it. Well, that's not a very good story, is it? <laughs> Beginning, middle, end. That's how stories work. I get to the middle and you solve the murder. We're not even into the third act. Well, then in the third act, you just explain how they done it, how they got away with it, <laughs> and how it ends. This is in a creative writing class. I can't seem to figure it out. Every time I've got the perfect murder laid out, they just, you go ahead and solve it. That's what detectives do. So maybe I just remove you from the story and Arthur tries to push against you. Give me a strength roll to see if you can... I shoot him. <laughs> oh, well, unless you get a one, I'm pushing, you're not pushing away. He's very weak. <laughs> I mean, I only got a six. <laughs> I got a two. Oh, okay, we're fine. <laughs> I cuff Arthur. <laughs> What are you doing? I'm you not the are killer. Coming with me, and I push him out the front door. <laughs> and as you guys push yourselves out the front door, you step into the main streets of Silverton, but they are darkened and full of fog. You see the bear man off in the distance to your left, approaching you, and Arthur turns to you. This is not how the story ends. The killer is Dennis. But then we're just going to wake up here again. Well, you're not supposed to figure it out. No one ever figured out when I killed the people. What people? (laughs) I think we're having this conversation in Helltown, USA. (laughs) Hey, maybe we should find some cover before we have this whole thing. (laughs) Sorry, I got a little, you know, detective work. We go back inside. (laughs) We shut the doors. Now ask him the question. Who did you kill? Arthur explains that his stories were getting dry. And so he began to co- commit serial murders to get ideas for his stories. To moisten them. <laughs> and that the stories were supposed to end with the mystery unresolved, but you've continually solved the mystery. Do I remember ever solving a mystery where Arthur killed a bunch of people? No. Oh. Maybe we are fake. There's a chance. <laughs> Give me an insight check. <laughs> 21. 22. You guys realize you don't have any memories before you hear the door slam shut behind you. And in front of you is a, what appears to be a bellboy. I feel like we are fake. It does <laughs> seem that way. Well, one mystery solved. <laughs> <laughs> Here, bear man. So, Arthur, how's the story supposed to end? The story is supposed to end when no one figures it out and the killer gets away. Well, well, it looks like nobody murdered Benjamin. It was a freak accident. <laughs> the building begins to rumble and shake. The blood from the walls begins to bleed out. Didn't the walls work. are bleeding again. It didn't work. <laughs> I had one plan and it didn't work. My only other plan was I'm gonna, to... I'm going to try one more thing. I'll tell you how the story ends, Arthur. It was the psychotic cop in the lounge <laughs> with the pistol. And I shoot him in the head. And with that, <laughs> the story ends. 
yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait, are we real now? Are we still here? <laughs> we'll have to go on YouTube afterwards and try to find an ending explained. <laughs> So what happens? <laughs> That's the story ends right there. And it's you kind of awaken an climactic scene. <laughs> <laughs> and you awaken oh, okay, in a hotel room, the Gem Motel in the middle of Silverton, <clears throat> in the bra in the middle of the day. Both of you in the same bed, just for sake of, <laughs> <laughs> for the sake of brevity. <laughs> so you are alive or real. real? So are you? Yeah. I think, but why are we here? I check the window. Outside, it looks bright and sunny, and you hear weirdly owls chirping in the middle of the day for continuity's sake. <laughs> I go sense. outside. As you open up the front door, Silverton is live and bustling. The sun is beaming down, and it's the beginning of a brand new day for your two characters. I look at my badge. Reads like normal. You still have no memories, though. I check my wallet. Do I have a valid driver's license? <laughs> it expired a year ago. Well, that's not good. <laughs> Probably should have gotten that renewed. It's going to be a bitch to get a new one. It's easier to renew than get a new one. You're not wrong. Everybody knows that. Well, that is the actual end right there. I had three possible endings, depending on where you sacrificed Arthur or what you did with him. I was, about <laughs> was to my just... shooting him in the head one of the endings? The only way to make you two real. Ha! Oh, nice! <laughs> Everything else would have ended the story with no conclusion for you. Well, Sorry. good thing I didn't take over and yeah, push him see, to see, Bear Man. <laughs> Terrible idea. That was just the worst idea I've ever heard in my life. If you sacrificed him to Bear Man, the story would have ended with no conclusion for you because the story's over. There's no more writing of it. That makes sense. Well, how is there writing now? He's dead. Well, you've... Hey, I told you, we'll go on YouTube and see if we can explain later. Don't question it. Anyway, I hope you I guys... I made us real. <laughs> That's right. That's right. We're real people now. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and if you want to see the continued adventures of these two detectives in Silverton, because I'm sure they'll go back for another case. <laughs> I mean, we're just barely real. I need to find myself. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to go on a self. I got to go find journey. my bliss. But hey, here on YouTube, if you guys want to see it, let me know in the comments down below. Maybe we'll do another continued adventure of these two detectives on another mystery in a nearby town that loops them back into Silverton. <laughs> oh, God. It's ton silver. It's the neighboring town. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this. We'll be doing another horror kind of series of stuff going on in general. And if you like this, make sure you hit that bell. Turning on notifications right here at Dungeons and Ale, the channel where this went live. And make sure you hit the subscription button and hit like and let us know what you thought down below. The only complaint I have with my experiment here was <laughs> you went the killer the first time. You made the last guy you talked to. Yeah, but we learned all the information we needed. To, yeah, you did it to did. like rope him into not or to to right. But I couldn't. I did the, all the scary elements were supposed to kick off when you had the first one figured out. Okay, so we I just have an hour out. of YouTube questions. Just we chuckle not the around. scare out an hour later. <laughs> Hope welcome. you guys enjoyed. Oh, we're in next a time. horror movie. <laughs> I didn't even know.